Welcome to this walkthrough of the Avocado Farm financial model template from efinancialmodels.com. Before we start, if you like to see more videos from us, please push the subscribe button. A link to the template referred to in this video is included in the description below. The purpose of this financial model is to forecast the expected financial performance of an avocado farm plantation. Avocado trees, they require up to four, four to five years until they can bear fruit. So we have to deal with a quite a long planning horizons. There are a lot of costs involved. First, to initially uh, spend on equipment, machineries, but also if we have to purchase uh, lands. So there's a lot of money at stake here. It also costs a lot of money to basically plant and then grow the trees. There's also is taken into account into this model and we also want to run simulations what happens if we acquire certain lands earlier or later how can we optimize our cash flows and the growth of our business so this template was designed to exactly do this and what we then want to figure out was to what's the expected profitability of our project is it a good idea to invest? How much funding is required? And we want to know all the relevant metrics which are of relevance to our avocado farm project. So this is how the model works. We have here sections to enter um, the initial capex assumptions, except from land, these are basically fixed amounts. If we have um, capex later on, we can basically use the projected schedule when we could also overwrite the capex in case we would have some exceptional capex items later, later on. Then we have an inventory of the land, so we basically spe specify what, where, which lands and what is the size of these lands when they will be acquired, are they already in our possession or they will be, um, or, can, or we, do we plan to acquire them later on? When are they going to be planted? And we can basically move the planting years up or down on our schedule. We have a 10 year forecast schedule. And then we can also say if you're going to own or rent these lands. So we can run simulation which options might be better or we can also utilize our cash flows depending on what options here we choose. The next topic are the harvest yields. So it takes four to five years until these trees grow fruits. Afterwards the question is what is the target yield on a stabilized basis and as you can see here what we do is we assume that in earlier years the yields can be lower and then oh, they need a bit more time until the yields can really reach their full potential. So we have here a, um, a model prepared where we can adjust the yields. All these figures, they are just example figures. You will have to do your own due diligence and calibrate the model with your own specific assumptions and also with the costs uh, relevant in your area and in your market. So we have here the yields. We also have here another options in case some of these lands or show significant higher yield than others. So for instance, in case one land would have higher yield potential, we could use these factors here to adjust the yield. And then you can see the target yields move up or down once more, uh, taking into account this schedule here as well. Then we have selling prices. So avocados, they can maybe they can be sold in different markets. Each market has a different price. So it really depends what's the target sales split here. And we also want to model this. And if we um, basically then also this translates in different revenue sources by selling to these three different markets. And as you can see, the key is this breakdown. How much of the produced volume is going to be sold? Uh, where in which market. Then we have uh, already the next item. So all this allows us to, to basically calculate the revenues, volumes and prices. This gives us revenues. And then the next question is what will be the costs? So we have costs related to the planting, 
to the growing and the harvesting and processing. And the way this works is, so we basically look at, um, let's go back one more to our land schedule to maybe to explain that first. So we have here an inventory of which lands are when under management. As you can see, we basically grow the lands over management over time. Some of these lands are owned, some are rented, so we keep track which piece of land is owned, rented. And then we also uh, have a schedule for the planting. So if we want to change our plan and the planting years, they might from, we move from year one to year three, for instance, then this will be reflected here on our plan. And you can see this then moves, moves up. And then from this planting year, it takes about four to five years until we can get to a harvest. So it really depends when you do the planting and sometimes we have to move this around. So that's why we did it this, this way. Then we keep track here of the harvest um, cycles. We count the years until the trees are ready to, uh, to be harvested. So then we also know how many areas can be harvested in which, in which year. And as I said, again, if you move the planting years um, around, then also the harvest schedule will change. And you see now we can get more volumes earlier on if we do the planting earlier. And we keep track of the pre -age, tree age, how many avocado trees um, we, we plan to have. And then the yields, as you can see, we apply different yields per area. And then we also can basically calculate the volumes. So we have all the inventory of the land and what's happening on the land on this sheet here. And then once we have that, we can then also basically use this to calculate the cost. And as you can see, if you have plantings in year one, two and six, then planting costs should only happen in those years. Growing costs, they depend how much trees need to be taken care of and need to be uh, grown. So as we have more and more trees and more area land under management, these costs will grow over time. Harvesting costs, they occur once the trees are ready to be harvested. So that cost will only occur in this case as of year five, same as processing costs. So these are the costs triggered by what activities we can do at our plantations. Then we have a next set of cost assumptions, which are the overhead costs. These are costs which occur um, anytime. They are related to the management of the whole operations and the costs which occur at that level. And here we have basically, we take the costs assuming them to be the same. If they would vary, we would have to overwrite these costs uh, on, the schedule, on the schedule here. Then we also have um, financing costs. In our case, we, what we do is we calculate the total financing requirements and then we say how much will be uh, financed by debt or by equity. So let's say I have some debt financing and you see here if we, you see if we if don't have a cash buffer then at one point the cash balance we get zero. If we have, uh, let's say we want to have a cash buffer, so then to make sure that the cash balance doesn't get to zero, let's say we also have some equity, oh sorry, some debt financing, or maybe a bit more. So we have a loan A, 4% uh, interest, and then here, let's say we round this to, let's say, 2.2 million. Voilà. So I use the cash buffer to round it. Okay. And then we, if we have this structure here, then we have a debt schedule to take care of. And here we, we can see the big picture or we can see it here. We draw down the debt during, uh, in this case, these two years. We can also change this if needed. So we can fully play around with this. And then we can also play around when the debt has to be repaid. In this case, we assume a repayment plan over eight years. 
So that means we will need cash flows to basically start repaying the debt. Actually, this doesn't really make sense because we need five years to grow these trees. So we probably should start moving this a bit um, to the to the backside that the debt repayment happens here and not here where we don't have yet the cash flow to repay the debt. And yeah, so we can do this. And then we are pretty much through. We have all the assumptions entered. Ah, one more thing, exit valuation. So here, if we go to the financial sheet, what we are saying here is that we can value the business based on four different methods, either based on a revenue multiple, EBITDA multiple, or some multiple related to the area under management or the lands owned. We can select which method to apply. In this case, we take an EBITDA multiple. And then what we do is we look at the EBITDA of the respective years and then we multiply that, um, that EBITDA so that gives us the expected business valuation. And this valuation we then can also use as an exit valuation when we look at the overall profitability of our project. So doing all this gives allows us to basically pull up um, or to basically forecast the three financial statement, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. If we have all these statements, we can then also basically calculate the financial ratios. That, that's why we, we do this. And then we can also make sure that these um, ratios are acceptable in the long term to, for instance, for a lender. And we also can see if our returns are in line with maybe similar companies in the industry. So this gives us a bit of a better idea how our financial plan is expected to, to work out. Then there are a lot of tables regarding future analysis regarding profitability. Um, and then what we do is we look at the free cash flows. And so we have here the free cash flow calculation year by year up to the exit. And based on this forecast, we can then also calculate the metrics so that this project now is telling us that on an unlevered basis, this results in a 40, 24% IRR. If we use our leverage, we use some debt financing, we can move this up even to the direction 28%. And then we can also uh, basically, this would now tell us that this is a pretty good project because it's financially attractive to, to do this and we can generate, basically create value and money for shareholders and maybe also stakeholders. And one more thing to show is this were all tables related to annual financial forecasts. We also have monthly. The way the monthly budgets work is that we take the yearly figures and we allocate them to in which month they will happen. For instance, you can see here the planting, we can say that should happen in the first month in this case. And then what's happening is that the costs are moved to, or basically moved to this month. So we can basically develop a month to month uh, budget for the first years. And we can do this for all the years up to the planting, uh, to the harvesting. And for harvesting, we can then also have to specify in which months, how much of the annual volumes are going to be harvested. So let's say if this would happen earlier, then we could also get the cash flows on the revenues in earlier. And so this allows us to get a more clear picture on the monthly profits and then also on the cash flows and the resulting cash balance. We now, we now take all these figures and we summarize them on a summary sheet so we can get the big picture on how our plan is going to develop how our revenues are going to grow, when the revenues will coming in, what this means in terms of profits, how the breakdown of sales is expected to happen, how many lands we need to have under management to execute this plan, what will be the composition of our trees, when will they get to fruit bearing age on, 
as a percentage of the total trees we have under land management, how many avocados we're going to um, harvest, what's the average uh, number of avocados per trees, etc., etc. All these metrics are used to get a better gris a grasp on our plan. There's also break-even analysis included, more details on land owned are rented. For the monthly budgets, we can select here which year we want to look at. As you can see in year one, there is no harvest volume, there is only costs. And same up to year four and only in year five, we have basically, now if you remember we allocated the harvest to March and April, so that's why where we can get harvest volume and then also profits in. So doing all this allows us to get a grasp of the overall feasibility of the project and we can then also see the feasibility metrics in, in this case the IRR and how this is going to expect it to, to turn out. So yes, this is more or less how this model works, what it can do. It can run a lot of analysis, especially once you start to move around here these uh, the acquisition or planting years of these of these lands so it can basically will lead to different cash flows and also different metrics so i hope this walkthrough was useful if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and visit our website efinancialmodels.com a link to the financial model template referred to in this video is included in the description below thank you for watching